Hello everyone, welcome back. Um, I'm going to explain to you guys in this tutorial how to set up a Postgres database on the Heroku platform. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and begin. I'm going to go over here to the URL. Um, I'll leave this in the description below. You guys can register here, confirm your email. Once all that's done, let's go ahead and log in. So once you log into your uh, Heroku account, what we're going to take a look at is the following. We start off with our dashboard. So we're going to create a new project. Let's create a new app. Now the app names have to be unique, guys. So I'm just going to type in here, Pokemon 2017 All right, now I'm just going to use a very basic example with the Pokemon. I'm just going to have a Pokemon and a Pokemon trainer, just for the purposes of this video. Now here you can kind of see some of the functionalities that Heroku offers you. You can add a pipeline. Uh, you can connect to GitHub, um, you can use the container registry, uh, all sorts of really cool things here. So what we're going to focus on first is installing the Heroku CLI. Now to install this command line interface, uh, you will need to install Brew. Uh, I'll leave the link in the description below. So we're going to copy this command and we'll paste it into our terminal. All right, now since I've already installed it on my machine, it's just going to tell me that here. It's going to show me the latest version. All right, once we've installed this, it's basically going to unlock this command here, this Heroku command, which we'll use in a minute. All right, so now that we've done that, let's go back, and we're going to create the Postgres database. So we head over to Resources, and we'll type in Postgres, and here we'll see the different plans. Now, depending on your needs, there's uh, different plans available, the standard all the way to a $16,000 a month plan for big enterprise applications. We'll focus on the hobby dev, which is free. Now, once we submit the form and open the database, it's going to show us what we can do and what are the basic limitations of the database. All right, let's wait for this to configure. Yeah, so here is provisioning our database and we'll take a look at the utilization restrictions. We're allowed up to 20 connections, which is pretty decent for a small project. Um, we're also allowed 10,000 rows of storage, which is more than enough for what we need for the courses at the university. And that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and begin by looking at the settings and checking the database credentials. Now here we have information relating to the host, the database, the username, the port that the database is on, the password, and some other information here. All right, now just to uh, be able to create our database, we need this information. So I'm going to go over here to our terminal, and I'm going to type in this information below. We have uh, what do you have this instruction from a previous example. I'm just going to copy this, and we're going to edit this into a text editor. All right, so. The first thing we're going to do is replace the host here with the host for our particular database. The port remains the same. The username will change. Let's copy this. And this just basically tells us that we'll be, we're going to be providing a password uh, once the database has been logged into. So we're going to select the database name. And that's it. All right, so I'm going to copy this instruction, this command, and I'll type it in here, copy and paste. Now, here it's going to ask us to type in our password, so we're going to copy this and paste it. Oh, oops, there must have been something wrong here. Maybe I didn't copy the database name. Right, let's go ahead and put that here. Okay, let's try this again. I'm going to copy the password. There we go. So here, uh, we have, we've already logged in to the database. All right, so if, I, if we type in backslash DT, it'll show us the list of relations. And since we don't have any at the moment, it's going to show up as blank. All right, guys, so now that we've taken a look at how to enter the database, we're going to create a schema. So I'm going to open up a new terminal. All right, and let's open up 
the document. So let's go to our desktop. And it's going to be named Pokemon.sql. Now, you can use any text editor. I just prefer to use Sublime Text. All right, guys. So here we're going to just have, I'm going to create two tables. All right. So our first one is just going to be to create a trainer. All right. Let me make this a little smaller. All right. So we'll have here create table. I'll name this a trainer. And we're going to give it some attributes. So a trainer is going to have a trainer ID which will be numeric, which is the standard for Postgres. All right, he's also going to have a name, which will designate by varchar, and inside we'll put the number of bytes. And we'll, we could also say he has some badges. All right, that's going to be numeric as well. And we're going to give it a primary key. So we'll name this trainer pk. And the primary key for the trainer will just be his ID. All right, now once we have this, we're going to create uh, another table for our Pokemon. So create Pokemon. All right, let's do the same thing we did earlier. And we'll give it the Pokemon some attributes as well. The Pokemon has an ID according to his entry in the Pokedex. Um, he also has a name, let's give that Varchar, and he also has a trainer, which is, which is associated to the particular Pokemon. We'll take a look at this in a minute. Alright, and we'll make our constraint the primary key. Alright, so we're going to have here primary key, and it's going to be the ID of the Pokemon. Alright, now... We will have to alter this table just to provide some unique constraints. All right, so let's alter this table and we'll add a constraint so that the Pokemon has a unique name. Okay, so this is going to be unique name. All right, well, we'll also need to add another constraint to provide the foreign key of the trainer. All right, so we'll have alter table, we'll alter the Pokemon table, I'm going to add a constraint, fk Pokemon trainer, and this is going to be a foreign key to the trainer attribute in my Pokemon class, and it's going to reference my trainer, Oop, this is ref references the ID of a trainer. All right, so here we created a table with a trainer. We've also um, created a Pokemon table, which has ID, name, and trainer. And we all we added one constraint for the Pokemon, and we added a foreign key to the trainer. All right, let's go ahead and save this. All right, and when we come back, um, we're going to type in this instruction. Now, what this does is uh, it basically connects to our application, which we named as this and it's going to execute this SQL um, script. All right, there we go. So now if we come back here and we type in slash DT, we see the two tables have been created. Now, if we want to take a look that and make sure that our constraints are in place, we'll type in backslash T plus the name of the table. And we see here that uh, the primary key is the ID of this Pokemon, and it has a unique constraint for the name of the Pokemon, and it has a foreign key constraint for, you know, referencing the trainer ID. Now, if we do the same thing for the trainer, we'll see that he has he's referenced by the t Pokemon table in which the ID of the trainer is the foreign key of that table. So, everything looks good so far. So now what we can do is come back over here to Firefox and we're going to go to Data Clips. Now Data Clips is kind of like a, a, it's a way to see our data. It won't let us do any inserts, but we can do select pretty much most queries to the database that exists. So let's create a Data Clip. Um, there we go. I'll just call this query, let's just say here. 
select from a trainer. There's nothing there, but this is just so that we can uh, save our data clip. Oops, moment. We're going to give it a name. We'll just call this test and we'll save and run this query. And it returned our results since we haven't put anything in yet. Now here we can see our table with our different values. And that's pretty much it. All right, so let's in the next video, uh, so that this isn't too long in part two, we're gonna do some inserts, we're gonna do some queries, and then I'll show you guys how to install DataGrip to make the access to the Heroku database a little bit more efficient. All right, so I'll see you guys in the next video.